Hey everyone, this is uh, David Flad from Release Over 20. And um, this is the first uh, discussion that um, I want to have with different um, people to talk about fisheries biology because uh, one really important thing that I think we're accomplishing with Release Over 20 is educating the average angler about more about the the biology of the fish that we're catching because it really presents the uh the why behind you should you should release over 20 or release a bigger fish and uh, this one is like really pretty interesting i think um because uh, if you know the history of release over 20 we started in 2020 and i'm based in charleston south carolina i'm just a an angler uh average angler like anyone else just uh, interested in uh, becoming a better angler. And um, I started out by really not having any idea about the biology of fish outside of Charleston. In fact, not even really knowing much about the biology within Charleston. But where I, I turned to the uh, research that I had available to me, which was published by our South Carolina DNR, um, to try to learn about these things and started out by, uh, you know, making some what we call tiles, these little information squares that that kind of boil down the facts into easily digestible, memorable factlets and uh, started out with a, a series of them on trout. And one of them was um, stating you know, a, a 20 inch trout is approximately four years old. And um, almost instantly I had people from around the country uh, reply and say, well, that's not really true in Texas, for example. And, you know, I, I did, really didn't know any different. Um, so this has kind of been a, an interesting journey for me to personally learn um, more regionally about how the species are different and, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's kind of been a fun thing to, to, uh, to get educated there. And as we go on down the line, uh, we're, we're learning more and more. So we have some really cool information we want to share with you, um, about trout. And, um, I just want to say like, whenever we put something out on release number 20, we always make sure that we back it up with research. So we're not speculating. If you look, um, you notice there's a lot of people that often put out information that's just their opinion. It's not based on actual fact. Well, wasn't long after we started getting entries in release over 20 that we started seeing some interesting trends. Probably the most shocking was that trout um, entering being entered from Virginia um, were being entered like a factor of like three to one over any other state. And it's like Virginia is slam dunking on the country for trout entries. And um, if you had asked the average person where are the biggest trout coming from, they would say probably Texas or Florida. Probably not anyone was going to say Virginia. And why is that? So I've heard a lot of people ask, is it because People in Virginia are more conservation minded. Is it something about the trout themselves? And, uh, you know, I don't know, because I didn't ever, haven't seen any data to back any of that up. You just only guess. So we might have uh, finally an answer as to why. And in order to talk about that in more detail, I brought on my uh, a leader in uh, fisheries conservation in Virginia and uh, someone I'm proud to call my friend. And we're trying to answer the question, what is it about Virginia trout? And uh, so I'm going to invite my friend, Charlie Church, onto the program. Hey, Charlie. What's up, Dave? How's it going? Thanks for having me on. <laughs> sure thing. Thanks so much for joining. We've had a, a lot of discussions over the years, just mostly about wanting to come fish and uh, One day. talk about, geek out on different things about biology. So I appreciate you, you being here. Yeah, man. No problem. Yeah. So um, we we put together some slides and the, the reason um, Charlie's here mainly is because I was just uh, 
working one day, like about a month ago, and I got a, a message from Charlie and it said, holy crap, check this out. And it was a published report by the Virginia DNR. I guess, is it the DNR? I don't, what do you call it up there? Yeah, I think it was the DNR, yeah. Um, anyway, it was. it's a research paper that shows, it's a really an extensive study of age versus length, which is mm -hmm. really important to what we're doing anyway. And it's got a lot of different species, but uh, one section is um, is on speckled trout, and it was pretty eye opening. And and what it forced me to do, um, I said, let's you know, let's get together and talk about this because it's fascinating. And I went and I looked up research papers from different states and regions, and we're going to pull them together and kind of talk about them and. I'm not, I just want a disclaimer, I'm not a biologist. I'm not a trained biologist. I'm an engineer. I'm an angler. I like to geek out about fishers biology. And are you that credential, Charlie? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a biologist. I'm like a product designer by day. <laughs> right. um, I, I mean, yeah, but data geeks right, me out. Yeah, let's talk about some of the um, data taking you take about trout though, right? Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, I got I got logs for every trip. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I got every every citation trout recorded, and it's just for like my information. Like I'll be like, oh, like like right now, like the weather's this such and such as this, and I'll look up like past days and see if and nothing ever is totally accurate. And you're always learning stuff, but it's fun. Yeah, a lot I think, of fun. Uh, you think Charlie's understating? He's like next level recording. <laughs> um, too much i i uh i do that as well but not nearly as in detail but mm -hmm. the thing for me is um i'm mainly recording like water temperature and time of year and like the tides tides are really important for us in south carolina or at least in charleston we've got like seven you know five to seven foot tides every six hours so we're really um a little bit unique in the country and that that's that's a big factor yeah um but uh i always forget when what the dates are like i'll go back in my log and say oh man that was in march <laughs> I, I'll, yeah. I'll, if i didn't write it down i would never remember yeah but, I mean, it, it keeps you honest too no fish tails when you got it written down right well i'm sure you've learned a lot from from doing yeah. so but anyway you're sort of like an amateur biologist i guess you'd say um, <laughs> Bi biologists without the lab experiments right right but all that to say that we're uh neither one neither one of us are biologists but we're interested and we both like to geek out on this mm -hmm. topic and um and what but we're going to present a lot of actual scientific data but we're also going to be speculating a little bit too. So just full disclosure on that. Um, I, I did put together like a, a presentation. I'm going to pull up on stage and uh, um, we're going to talk through it. And just in case in the future, we decide to publish this out on the, in like in a podcast format, we'll try to describe what we're looking at as well as uh, for those that are watching like on YouTube or, or one of the social media channels. But um, I wanted to show this data first. So this is data um, directly from release over 20s database. And this is since we since inception. So since approximately 2020, uh, we keep track of the entries by state. And uh, here you can see that Virginia is uh, almost three to one um, above the next highest entry, which is North Carolina. So North Carolina has roughly 2,000 entries and Virginia's got 5,000. And then from then on, it's like Texas has like, you know, a little over 1,500 and so on. It's more of a continuous uh, trail, but then you have this giant spike for Virginia. So just to back up the statements that Virginia um, has more entries and these are mostly trout. And the reason is that we started out for like the first year and a half only accepting trout. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until more recently we started doing sheep's head. We don't get very many sheep's head entries from Virginia. Um, and then flounder, we don't get many flounder entries in general. Um, and then only recently we started with um, redfish. But 
there are redfish there, there are all, all species are lumped in here but these are primarily trout at least in the virginia plot um, south carolina is uh fifth place right now um, on on the leaderboard so hey yeah go go south carolina <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and furthermore uh so here are our angler leaderboard top 10 since inception the top eight are all from virginia yeah with Corey, Corey mayo leading the way with something like 420 um fish entered by him alone which is fantastic like uh there was one december i think he entered like 55 trout oh geez. and that was just completely blown away i was like what in the heck <laughs> He's he's sick. He's really good. Yeah, and it's incredible. And yeah. you know, Medel Bedrano, he's a, he's a friend of our both both of ours. Yeah, he's got you know well over three hundred himself. Mm -hmm. But yeah, top eight. So this is not this is not like a a blip. This is this is really no kidding. Virginia is just donking on the rest of the country, and I think nobody saw that coming, um, really. So. If we look at this plot, this is this is the South Carolina uh, handbook on spotted sea trout, and this is the plot that I started out looking at. And it, what it shows is the average length versus um, age and years for males and females, and it clearly shows. Um, and by the way we're only going to really talk about female trout in this yeah. talk because um, males don't get nearly as big um, in general. So um, the females are really it's, it's what we're focusing on, but you can clearly see in this chart, the average um, female at age four years old is 20 inches. So that's where that tile that I published came, came from is this plot right here. What this, what this plot doesn't show is um, all the data. It only shows the average, which implies half of the trout for each data point are larger and half are smaller. Um, but we don't have any sort of range information there. Um, so, so like I mentioned, I started digging into other states' data and came across this plot here from the Western Gulf Coast, which is like basically the entire Gulf Coast of Texas, which is a pretty big range in latitude. I mean, Texas, as we know, is a giant state. Um, up All the way up by Louisiana is a whole lot different than it is down in Port Mansfield, for example. Um, but they have their data sort of lumped together here. And it's showing all the data plus the average with the average in it. And here it's uh, it's very clear to see something that not many people talk about, which is the the range at a certain length, right? Mm -hmm. Charlie, it's crazy, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's all over the place too. I mean, did, did you really know that? No, no, no. I just look at the average and go, this is how yeah, the fish Yeah, so it's just, a, let me just give a for example. So that a female trout at, let's say, age three in Texas could be as small as, what, guessing 15 inches. Mm -hmm. And it could be as large as 27. Yeah. Um, but the average being 20. So that's a huge range. That's a, that's a, that means that the growth rate's all over the map for mm -hmm. these trout, these fish, right? Yeah. Um, I... I put these three lines in here for 20 inches, 25 and 30, because the, the vertical scales in millimeters, probably a lot of people don't know how to convert metric much. Um, but I appreciate it, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what it shows is that the people who are saying that, you know, four inch, I mean, a four year old trout is 20 inches. Well, that's not true in Texas. Well, they're right. It's, it's really three age three. Mm -hmm. is about the right um, age for a 20 inch trout in Texas. So they do grow faster, in fact. Mm -hmm. And going forward, I think what we'll do is start modifying those tiles and, and make them more regionally based. Um, 
just to be more accurate, you know, we're learning as we go. Yeah. Um, but very interesting to see these charts. So that's like basically the, the conclusion from this that I would draw is that the growth rate is, is in fact significantly faster in Texas. Um, but it's also that range. That range is, is really something it's where you could have a four year old child be almost, almost 30 inches. Some of look them at the, look at the male growth line too. I mean, right. they're so much smaller kind yep. of lines up to over 20, usually being females. Yep. Yep. A 20 inch trout in Texas eight on average is eight, age eight. I see one that's um, over 25, but yeah. Right. But the thing is they also live to be nine or 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty long lived. Um, pretty interesting stuff. So moving forward, um, I found this paper from Florida. So Florida has reams of data on their fishery. It's, so, it's such an important part of their economy. I think they, FWC does a lot of research. And this this chart, um, if you can't see it, it shows six different regions of Florida going from roughly Panama City, uh, looks like Clearwater area, Tampa Bay, um, and then uh, the Indian River Lagoon and up in Jacksonville. So they have the same chart for each of these regions. And what you what you can see is that um, the females are, you know, it's a little hard to draw the graph, but three and a half, three to three and a half years old at 20 inches. Yeah. Um, with the exception of the Indian River slash Banana River Lagoon um, estuary where they grow faster. And who knows why? Maybe it's because they're sort of semi-protected by the lagoon. Uh, maybe they got better food sources. Who knows what? But they're they're like solid age three at 20 inches. So they're a little bit faster growing. And the range of size in that um, bay system is like a lot bigger than the rest of Florida as well. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting stuff to me. Um, but again, I think the, the summary is that, yeah, they grow faster in Florida as well. Anything else you can think of that I missed there, Charlotte? No, nah, man. I mean, these charts are crazy. Um, yeah. It's yeah. so cool to, to compare them across across their full range, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it, I mean, it's crazy. And it makes you wonder if, like, the ones that are growing, like, really fast, like, if they have good genetics and those are the ones that, like, constantly grow fast. But right. Besides the point. <laughs> so hold that thought because I want to come yeah. back and talk. I want to I want to spitball about that later. Okay. <laughs> Let's, yeah, I want to get the date out here, and then I want to, then I want to, I want to um, chat about it. <laughs> um, okay, so this data came from North Carolina, and this shows again the um, average and range at a given length. So, uh, pretty, pretty significant here too, um, showing age three. 20, maybe a little more than 20 inches in North Carolina mm -hmm. with a giant range again. So age three could be 10 inches, could be 30. Um, unreal. It's just, it's a huge, huge, huge skew. But on, on average, um, again, age three. So they're growing faster in North Carolina as well. Yeah. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about what might be happening there later but um now let's pull up charlie's data <laughs> where the jaws hit the floor so uh, one caveat to this go ahead yeah so this is uh from that dnr study uh, a friend of mine um sent it to me it's super good trout fisherman super quiet so i won't say his name uh but he sent it to me i was like did you did you know this um so i can't take credit but it's it's insane yeah so one caveat to this is it's not a big sample size. It's like 350 fish or something like that, 390 fish uh, versus like Florida has got 10,000 or something like that. But it's probably enough to be statistically significant 
and um, what it shows is from that sample, they aged these uh, with their ear autoliths and put out the how many they caught within a certain, like broke down by each inch. Um, and what it shows in Virginia is that like in the first year, these fish are on average, again, these are females, about 12 inches. By age one, 17 inches. Age two, over 20 inches. So where South Carolina fish are four years old at at 20 inches and the rest of the country three to three and a half years old at 20 inches virginia they're 20 inches at age two insane um yeah. so how big is one at age four on average 27 28 inches in virginia it's, it's like what but interestingly there weren't any fish over age five is that right yeah that's so what in i guess what it means basically is that these fish grow like they grow fast and die young right <laughs> i think it's like some survival thing they have to do because you know well, you have extra so tell me about your water temps right guess, you know what age what water temps do your fish die um, I mean, I, I've caught I've caught them at thirty nine. Um, thirty nine. Wow. Yeah, cold. Uh, like you put it back, and it like doesn't even move. It's like a popsicle. I think the like, coldest I've caught, like a citation, was forty one. Um, usually, like if the water's in like the thirties for a couple of days, they're gonna kick the bucket. Um, that that being said, like it's like if the water's 37 at like the back of a river it might still be like 44 45 in the bay and they can find warmth somewhere right um the two things that really get us are like the dramatic temperature swings like we'll have some warm days and then just tanks and that'll get them like they'll be in the back and then they'll get stuck there mm -hmm. or um if we get like a what are they called like um polar polar vortex those yeah. things are horrible <laughs> yeah yeah or it's like freezing for like two weeks and the bay's frozen and all your fish die yeah that sucks mm -hmm. so i wonder if it's just that like that extreme weather mm -hmm. it's like over time it's changed their genetics so that because like um just as a for example it's pretty well known that our south carolina fish will die if it's 45 degrees for like three days in a row oh man we're still slamming them at 45 yeah so our, ours are just going to kick the bucket yeah maybe they have to grow so fast because they might encounter a, a, a fish kill yeah and they couldn't survive long term or something like that yeah and i mean we also have like like bunker up here like trout are eating bunker and all that i mean i think they're kind of eating that most places pogies in the south same thing um mm -hmm. but i think it's what's different is how cold our water gets and how they have to survive it right interesting mm -hmm. so i wanted to summarize this regional data in the next chart and it's pretty shocking if you pull this plot up so um people have probably heard me whine and complain that our south carolina trout fishery is the worst in the country and now i have proof <laughs> here's your proof <laughs> it shows uh lake versus age on average for females for South Carolina, Florida, Texas, and Virginia. And you'll see Texas and, and Florida are pretty pretty similar to each other. And mm -hmm. um, South Carolina's across the board, the smallest um, by, by length. But Virginia just, it's on a whole different chart. Like your fish are on steroids. <laughs> right. It's um, crazy. But I let's, so, this is like, um, I want to I want to pause here for a second and let's just talk. Let's spitball just you and me, two anglers, two pretty avid trout anglers with a lot of experience. Um, I want to compare me being from the worst trout state and you being from probably the best based on this data. Um, like, if you, I'll start and then you you give me your numbers like 
in a year, on average, if you had to guesstimate, uh, educated guess, how many fish, like roughly 17 inches, do you catch? Oh, probably a lot. Um, I mean, usually it's like you're, uh, you'll get like a bunch of 18 inches and then some 20s and then maybe a good one. Um, so, so you know, I'll catch in the hundreds, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. very common. Very like it's it's like it's no big deal. All day long you catch a seventeen incher, right? Yeah, yeah. So a twenty inch, roughly twenty inch fish in a whole year. I know this number really well because I track it really closely. Um, I'll catch twelve or thirteen, maybe fourteen in a year. Yeah, uh, I mean, what, what about you? Um, well. I, gosh, I, dude, I haven't been entering my fish for you, so I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just, just, just spit um, like, just try to guess. Me. I don't know. Like, I think I, ta I think last year I probably had like 200 or 300. Um, Incredible. but keep, yeah. keep in mind, like, like I'm, I'm working full time. I got two kids, so I'm not fishing as much as I could. But I mean, you can really get in them. Like, we had days where we had a day where we did 40 over 20 in a day. Yeah. Um, which like some of the guys up here are like really dialed are like yeah like that's that happens if you get in the right mm -hmm. school yep one second no. get how, how, how about like say 24 and above uh that i can tell you because I, I track that um that's a so citation I, in virginia yeah yeah so yeah. last year i did 38 um 38. but again I, I like you know i was in them and then started a new job wasn't fishing as much so yeah i think i could have done more. making excuses because you only caught 38 so I'll catch I'll catch one that size maybe if I'm lucky I'll catch one. <laughs> I, no, I mean like I it's know great. So similar thing for me. I've I've got a job. I'm maybe fishing fifty <laughs> yeah. times a year or something like that. I know someone who got eighty. Um, and <sighs> wow. There's people who had more than that, and yeah, yeah, it can get pretty sick. So there's there's your sort of like uh, armchair. Mm -hmm proof of this chart right because if you think about abundance of fish in the estuary right um the one another fact that we had put out for release over 20 was that um if you start with a thousand trout at age zero at age four there's only eight left well what that means is like on they they estimate that about 30 percent of fish are lost due to um predation nutrition you know maybe they're caught in cats or whatever reason um the evidence shows that at least in south carolina about 30 percent of a year class are lost every year and but what that means is that if you start with a thousand there's only eight left after four years right so there's a there's a great more abundance is exponentially more abundant number of fish of a certain size at a certain year right so that's why we catch so many 15 to 17 inch fish because you know those are our two-year-old fish but you have just a quadrillion 20 inch fish because those are your two-year-olds yeah i mean you know and then every year they're getting more and more attrition and you you maybe your loss per year is more if they're only living to age five like it might oh. you might have like more 50 percent or Four percent loss or something. If we get a freeze, we feel it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the year after a freeze, you're you're like, you're all, you'll see like a whole age class is missing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we do feel it when it gets cold. But lucky for you that they recover that real fast, great. right? Two years. Yeah. Two years, you got twenty inches. Yeah, and sometimes for like us, you know, we we also have uh, we, like twenty ten was our last big freeze, and we lost most of our fish. But for us, you know, four years till you get a 20 incher. So we really feel it. Um, but we don't obviously don't have as many freezes as you have, not very, not as often. Yeah. I mean, you know? we've had a lot of big ones since then. Like mm -hmm. 2015, our fishery was like obliterated. Yeah. Uh, like, I think there were 66 citations registered in the state the next year. Um, Amazing. So yeah, it was like destroyed. Yeah. Uh, but luckily it's been warm. Mm -hmm. I got, I got, I haven't had trouble putting in the words like how, how 
significantly different our two fisheries are. <laughs> yeah. So I, I found a, a tag uh, recapture that went from 24 inches to I think it was 30 in like 280 days. Wow. Um, which is like like mind blowing. That's um, incredible. So that yeah, so you could actually tell in an individual fish how fast that thing grew. Yeah, yeah. And and so Virginia, we just started with new new tags for trout that are supposed to stay in a lot longer. Mm -hmm. um, so like it just started like in the last year or two. Um, so hopefully we'll start seeing more of those where like we have like a year or two in between re uh, like recaptures. Cool. So one thing that I think that release over 20, like over the long term, if we get a lot of people doing it, uh, um, if we talk about that range of size versus length, I mm -hmm. really think that anglers could have a um, probably a measurable effect on selecting for those faster growing fish yeah over time right if you choose to let the big ones go they're going to be the ones that are rep replenishing the population mm -hmm. it's just like if you have you know we had some friends that grew up our kids grew up with and their parents were both like the dad was like six 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 seven and the mom was like six two and guess how tall their kids were <laughs> like they were they were all tall yeah and i mean it's just like how you can breed breed dogs you know it's like if you if you cross the genetics of two fast growing fish they're going to get have offspring that are fast growing fish as well yeah i mean dude i i have two two tiger captures of my own one did three inches in three months which crazy wow. And yeah. then one, one was big, it was a 27 and a half and did a half inch in a month. Um, so like that's when they're like not supposed to be growing and it's like still growing. Um, yeah. So yeah, these are the ones you want to release uh, so you can catch again. And wow. I mean, I've, I've tagged a big one that Corey Mayo caught and it's his biggest was the one that I tagged. No um, and that one grew too. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. That's cool. Yep. So one last thing I wanted to, to show was um, just some information that I pulled up. And um, this is probably a lot of people heard about these two uh, fish that were caught in North Carolina. Um, and this, this could just be like, these are some of the fish on the upper range of the, you know, the variation in length versus age, but this is um, Kathy Jones um, was in um, near the Pamlico River um, on November 20th, 2022, caught a 33 inch, 11 pound, three ounce and uh, had the uh, ear bone sent in and it was aged at five years old. So um, we'll go back and look at that chart to see if that falls in line. But uh, um, mm -hmm. the other one was Todd. So Todd. Todd's fish was kind of the, the fish heard around the world. I think um, a lot of people talked about it and they were giving him crap because um, the fish didn't make it. I mean, but honestly, that fish is a true trophy, probably near the end of its life. I don't know. But this is also a North Carolina fish uh, caught on February 9th, a little, little further down by the Noose River, I think. Uh, 33 and a half, 12 pound, eight ounce fish. God, dude. Um, I contacted him and asked if he did get it, um, the, the age verified. And he said they did take the rack and, um, he heard, he didn't get the data back, but the, the biologist said, um, that they thought it was age five as well. So those are two just giant fish, relatively young. And if we go back to the North Carolina thing, so age five, I mean, it's very, very well that those could be, the upper, you know, couple spec specimens of a North Carolina uh, fish, mm -hmm. age five. But like you and I had talked about a little bit, it's also possible that those are migratory fish. Yeah. It might be Virginia fish that, that have gone down there. We don't know. We, we can only speculate. But I have a friend. So South Carolina is an interesting study, I think, because – where I live in Charleston, we have a large, real large estuary and our fish are known to stay their whole lives in our estuary. Whereas 
up the coast and near Myrtle's Inlet, which is like um, by most people know where Myrtle Beach is. They're just a little bit south of Myrtle Beach. Um, they have a pretty cool estuary because it doesn't, it's not fed by any rivers. It's just like uh, an inlet and a bunch of um, tributaries off the inlet. So it's completely flushed by really high salinity water. But what they have is like roughly around Thanksgiving time, I think. All of a sudden, these giant fish will show up and they'll last most of the winter and then they'll just disappear. So, my, my friend uh, Dan Connolly has like a trout tournament, and I, I've gone to it the last three years. And I mean, hell, I, I caught, you know, one day fishing. I didn't even know that freaking place, and I caught a 24 and a half inch trout. And it's the best fish I caught the whole year. And it's like, holy crap. Well, the crazy thing is. So it's a live release tournament, it's pretty pretty neat. I, I love to support it. Um, but I came in, I had like two fish that were, were like 19 and a half, maybe 21 in the morning. It was only like maybe 10 a.m. So we only been fishing like two hours. And I and I weighed those fish in. And I said, you know, what you been weighing in? And he goes, oh my God, you're not gonna believe it. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he goes, one of the teams, it was a uh, Captain Jimmy Deaver's team, they weighed a, a 28 inch, like eight and a half pound Fountain. fish. And their kicker was like six and a half pounds. And if that isn't the probably the heaviest two trout stringer in the history of South Carolina, I, I gotta be it's I gotta imagine it's top five. <laughs> like it's like there's no way those fish are not in Charleston, I tell you right now. <laughs> Um, but they must be coming down the coast, like from whether they're coming from North Carolina or coming all the way from Virginia. I don't know, but they're like a shared resource, I think. And, um, the reason I say that is that Dan, the, the guy who runs a tournament has caught, I think the fish was tagged by Keith Nuttall up in Virginia. So, so we know for a fact, based on the tag that some of those fish are coming all the way down from Virginia. And as we know, based on this talk, this, your fish are like, you know, on steroids. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. And, and a lot similar, of them, you know, there's great. so much, there's so much to learn. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of fish that go down to North Carolina. I think even like Virginia, North Carolina, look at our fishery as the same. Really? Um, Tech, I mean, technically, there's a state line in between us, but we have a ton of fish who go down there. Um, so and vice versa, you, we get a ton of their fish in the summer do or you in the warmer months. Do you think they go like throughout North Carolina or mainly more in the northern part? Or oh, any dude, idea? Uh, I need another another twenty or thirty years <laughs> to learn that one. Um, I know they go everywhere, though. Uh, I mean, the, the, they they go down to the Pamlico. Um, so they, they go everywhere. Um, I'm sure a lot, I'm sure some go to South Carolina, maybe some even go farther. Um, yeah. I've always wondered if, if, uh, they go to the same spots, like right. this fish goes down to like the sound and the outer banks or North Carolina. And then it comes up. Does it go to the same area it was living at in the summer or, um, that, I mean, does it stay down there if it's found nice water and bait and, I would love to see some satellite tags on them. That would be For so sure. cool. Maybe at some point we can follow this up with uh, maybe we can get someone, if we can find someone that studies that. I don't know if there is. I don't know how many people study trout like uh, as with a, with a viewpoint like we're doing now, which is like mm -hmm. based on the entire country. It seems like most, most wildlife um, state departments are focused on their own state. Not so much like the on a bigger picture, you know, yeah. but if anyone is listening and knows of anyone that has like a, a biologist that has studied trout migration along mm -hmm. the East Coast, like I, we'd love to talk to them and try to learn more and try to like educate other people on on that. But that's uh, it's pretty fascinating to me. Yeah, I mean, it's even it's important for fisheries management too. like if if half your fishery is going to another state for half the year. Um, and it's being managed totally differently, um, it does have an impact.
Mm -hmm. Right. So. Like, well, a great, a great study or example is North Carolina, right? So obviously they have a big problem with uh, commercial fuel netting. Mm -hmm. And there's, I know there's a CCA lawsuit trying to see what they can do about that. But, you know, if you're Virginia trout, or at least, uh, at least some portion of them are going to Virginia, I mean, to, to North Carolina, South Carolina, and, you know, they're much more likely to get gill netted that that affects your fishery as well mm -hmm. um well i hope you all have found this to be as uh fascinating as it has to me <laughs> and uh i know it does to charlie charlie and i will we'll get on the phone and geek out about this stuff <laughs> for hours on end yeah i'm ready i want to catch some five-year-olds dude <laughs> yeah <laughs> Come down. We'll, we'll catch you. Catch a five-year-old to South Carolina, twenty-one inches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, yep. so let's just wrap this up. And I, I, I wanted to uh, to wear this uh, shirt because I wanted you to. Thank uh, you. I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about your uh, your oh, latest venture. Sure. Yeah. So um, I started relatively salty on the side. Um, so, so I'm a part owner of a design studio and relatively salty is like a fun project. Uh, and it is fun. I mean, we're making shirts and swag around fishing. Uh, you know, I don't think we have really too many goals except for just to do the right thing. If we can give some money to organizations doing good stuff, we'll do it. Um, yeah, that one's got an important message. <laughs> um, so, so, no yeah. <laughs> yeah it's fun um yeah we'll see where it goes for sure well yeah i wish you luck with that i know you're a super talented guy and you got some is it your brother involved or it's my brother and then uh, illustrator tim melee um and he, he's a surfer i'd love to get some surfing stuff in there as well but right sure. now we're just doing fishing stuff and we'll just kind of react to what's working and what we're enjoying doing um i'm like a i skateboarded for like forever growing up and uh i do think fishing needs a little skating in it and so it might be an opportunity to to do that as well kind of that skate vibe to it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely cool. yeah yeah skaters always had that kind of cool coolness vibe to it you know with the <laughs> art and everything and all yeah. the, all the slaps and stuff yep yeah yeah let's see well, I'm glad to support you. Just for the record, I didn't uh, get this for free from Charlie. I bought it through the store like an average Thank person you. would. And Thank I encourage you. everyone else to do the same. Everyone wants free stuff. And I always say, support your small businesses by buying it at full price. And, you know, come on. <laughs> yeah. You, you can afford it. <laughs> you can afford yeah. You can afford to go out to dinner. You can afford a T-shirt. So, Thank you. I um, appreciate it. Yeah. And you got a young family too, right? Hey, my youngest is, or my oldest kid is into fishing now, so we're good. We're good. Oh, good. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he well, lost um, a giant this fall. It was crazy. Did he? Yeah, like, I took him, because I was like, the first big trout I'm, I want him to catch, like, if I hook it with him. So I hooked it, and it, like, came up on the surface. It was huge, dude. It was, like, it was the one we were looking for. So I was like, all right, get ready. And I handed him the rod. And right when I handed it to him, it came off. So oh, no. Probably for the better. He doesn't <laughs> need like a 30-inch fish as his first citation. <laughs> <laughs> it was huge, though, man. Yeah, but something like that can sort of light yeah. a fire in you, you know? Yeah. Just, and it, it might almost have been better they lost it because they didn't want to get it. another one <laughs> even more. He was like, Dad, why are you shaking? And I was like, like later, dude. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> Didn't you get your mom on a giant too? Yeah, my mom, um, she got a, a big one, like uh, over 28. It's so like 28 and a quarter. Wow. Um, and we were, um, we weren't trout fishing. We were puppy drum fishing. And because I was like, my parents like the drum fish. So we were out there and she hadn't like caught a fish in like three years. And I was like, I'm reeling in the next one. Mm -hmm. So like she starts cranking it in and I'm like, all right, like she'll catch a drum before we leave. And like I walked down to the beach to like land and I look and I'm like, oh my god, it's a huge <laughs> trout. Not a redfish. <laughs> yeah, and it was like like spawned out and long, so it like looks longer than it is. So at first I was like, wow. <laughs> well, I mean it was a huge fish, but I thought we were talking something crazy for her for a speckled trout. 
Wow. So yeah. cool. That's something yeah. I always say. It's like probably eight or nine out of 10 big trout that are caught are first mistaken for a redfish. Yeah. No, that's in places that you're not usually expecting a big one, right? Um, oh, it, dude, I was throwing the top water straight everywhere that fish was and everything. And it ate the cup mullet on the bottom for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Oh, well. Awesome. That's good. Well, thanks so much, buddy. All right, man. Have a good night. One of these days, I'll get my butt up there to try to fish with you. Let's do it. And uh, I look forward to it. I'll try to catch my Dell while I'm up there. <laughs> Hope you can stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's going to be the challenge. If you don't know Medell, he fishes at night, like, like <laughs> in the middle of the night. He doesn't need yeah. sleep. He's like a one of those people. Yeah, I can't um, do it. I can't either. Anyway, thanks so much, bud. We'll talk soon. I'm going to stop here. Okay. Later.